What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like always, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I personally did today on the 7th of June in terms of my trades, as well as taking a look at some other stocks and ETFs that did very well today, and some that I'm personally watching over these next couple of trading days, heading on into the middle of of June in 2019. But before we do get into all of these different topics, all I ask from you viewers out there is if you do enjoy the content, go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you want to be further connected with our community, there are two links down below in the description box. One of them being the Strive Smart Discord group chat and the other one being the Strive Smart Facebook group. Get in there and you'll be able to talk to a bunch of other active investors and traders throughout the entire day and I guarantee you will find a bunch a bunch of value so let's hop into it guys the markets today really continued the rally they tore it up green day again guys it was an insane day in the markets the S&P 500 was up $29.85 at the close up 1.05 percent the NASDAQ was up $137.50, up 1.88%, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 263 points here at the close, up 1.02%. So for you guys that have been following the markets this week, this is the fourth day, I believe, let me double check that, but it is the fourth day, I think, of straight rallying for the market. Yes, it's the fourth day. Take a look at this, guys. On the 4th of June, very nice green day. 5th of June, very nice green day. 6th of June, extremely nice green day. And today was probably the craziest green day that we saw this entire week. So the markets have been on a tear. And for all you guys that don't know, what's the catalyst behind this? In my opinion, it's mostly because of the potential Federal Reserve interest rate cut that we might be seeing here over the next month or two that pumped a lot of optimism into the stock market it kind of calmed down the tensions that investors were feeling which I personally think it's a bit irrational because there's still a lot of um, downside in my personal opinion with the trade war Mexico tariffs we're ending uh, we're getting close to the end of an economic cycle but it seems like the market doesn't really care about this the market just continues to go up and up in my opinion again it's a bit irrational but let's just d dive into the uh, technicals here we'll break it down a bit let's see what you know I'm personally thinking here and what I'm personally um, watching for the next couple of days and weeks here in the market Market. So let me just quickly clear this drawing set very quickly. I'll get a uh, support resistance tool here so we can see some levels that the S&P is getting to. So we talked about, again, we closed up 30 points today. We're at $2,875-ish dollars right now on the S&P 500. And again, I'm drawing out some uh, levels here that I personally uh, think are key levels here on the S&P 500. So we broke out of a level of resistance today at about 2850. 2850 was a point uh, where we got rejected towards the end of March in 2019. We broke out of that level and it seems like we got rejected by the next resistance after 2850, which is at around 2880. And if we go here to the one day, one minute, we can see we actually hit exactly roughly that level at about 28.80, 28.85. And from there, we kind of peaked on the day and we were just riding flat for the rest of the day. Pretty much for three quarters of the day, we were just consolidating and slowly dipping down after the big gap up that we saw this morning. So going over back to that 184 hour chart, we talked about in yesterday's video how the S&P 500 was still trading below that 180 simple moving average resistance. Well, today you guys can clearly see that we broke out of that level. We're trending above it now. So on a technical basis, 
I guess you can say we are out of the downtrending pattern right now. We notice how we peaked out of the 50 SMA a couple of days ago, which was a good sign of a potential bull push, a bull run here. The next spot at that point that I was talking about a couple of videos ago was the 180 SMA. We pushed out of that, and both of those levels, again, have been resistances over this market sell-off that we've been seeing these past couple of weeks. So at this point in time, you know, we saw four straight green days here on the S&P. The RSI, the Relative Strength Index, continues to go up and up and up, getting more to the overbought status. So this is kind of worrying me right now, guys. I don't think this rally is going to last, you know, for the next week, for the next two weeks. It's going to have to cool off here at some point. And I do think next week we're going to potentially get a cool off in the overall markets uh, because, again, we've been up. If we can just see, you know, on the five-day, five-minute very quickly, you know, how much we uh, came up this week. If you guys can take a look at this, I'm sure it's about 4% at least. Eh, maybe not 4%. Let's take a look, though. We can see, okay, it's more than 4%. It's about 5%. The markets have moved in terms of the S&P 4 to 5% this week. So this is the best week that we've seen in the past couple of weeks. And... I don't know if it's sustainable heading into next week, to be honest, guys. I think we're going to see a bit of a pullback, especially since we are already seeing that resistance under this 2880 level on the S&P. This could be a sign that we are pulling back. So let's say we start to pull back. The support that I'll be watching for the S&P is at around 2850. And let's say we don't pull back. Let's say we continue this run or we see a little pullback and then continue the run and we break out of 2880. You know, the next level at that point that we may be going to, believe it or not, you know, might be those all time highs near around 2930 uh, to around 2955. That could be where we're going next on the SP 500. Now, going over here to the 20 day, one hour chart, again, we can see the resistance, pretty strong resistance under 2880. We broke out of the moving average resistances earlier this week, both the 50 and the 180 SMA. So this is looking pretty good for a breakout, but again, we are still getting rejected by this 2885 level, which I personally think is a very strong level heading into this next week. So let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average very quickly. Just like um, the S&P, we can see for three quarters of the day today, pretty much ever since we peaked, we kind of just consolidated and uh, just, just maintained the same level pretty much, right? Going over here to the 184-hour chart on the Dow Jones Industrial Average, just like the S&P, we ended up breaking out of the 180 simple moving average level of resistance. We're kind of hovering right now at another point of resistance at about $26,000 to about $26,200. I would say, you know, based on my analysis right now, just looking at this, that is a pretty strong level of resistance coming up on the Dow. Notice how a couple of months ago, in the middle, towards the end of February, we got rejected at $26,200. A couple of weeks after that, in the middle of March, we got rejected there again. Notice a couple of months later, in the middle of May, which was about three weeks ago, we got rejected right around the $26,000 level again. So this is, needless to say, a pretty strong um, level of resistance where we've gotten hit down, we've gotten rejected on three separate occasions there. So next week, if we do end up breaking out of $26,200, which again, I don't know if that's going to happen. Obviously, nobody knows if that's going to happen. But if we do get this little market cool off because we've seen four straight crazy days, you know, we might be pushing down to the 25,500 level of support. But let's say we cool off a little bit and we continue this run and we break out of 26,200. We may be going up to 26,500. And from there, who knows, guys, we might be testing those all time highs on the Dow Jones. But Again, like I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, that would be a very irrational market move, in my opinion, if we started to get to all-time highs again, because there's no real fundamental basis for the market to go to all-time highs. It's not like we actually got a rate cut. It's not like we actually came to a trade deal with China. It's not like 
corporate earnings were unbelievable. It's not like the economy's growing, right? There's no, or growing as it used to, right? There's no real fundamental reason in my eyes right now that the markets should be going to all-time highs. That would be very irrational in my personal opinion. Let me know down below what you guys think about that. I would love to know what you guys have to think. So going back to that 20-day, one-hour chart, not much to talk about other than the fact that we broke out of moving average resistances. And again, we're seeing a bit of um, a pullback here on the Dow Jones. So going back here to the NASDAQ very quickly, the NASDAQ went absolutely haywire today, as you guys can see, up 1.91%, literally almost doubling the performance of the S&P and um, the Dow Jones today. And we saw, if you guys were paying attention to individual stocks, we saw Microsoft actually hit all-time highs again today. And we saw Visa, Visa ticker symbol V, went on an absolute tear today as well. And what I want to point out here in the NASDAQ, and we kind of talked about this in yesterday's video. In yesterday's video, we talked about how the NASDAQ was trading in between the uh, kind of in the middle of the 50 and the 180 SMA here on the 184-hour chart, which kind of led me to believe that there was more juice in the tank for the NASDAQ to push up to that 180 SMA since it was trading right in the middle of the uh, two moving averages, right? And today we can see exactly that happened, right? It filled the gap back up to the 180 SMA and we're now seeing some resistance at this point in time. And mind you, the RSI is also very overbought on this one as well, just like it is on all three of the indexes that we track on this channel. So you know, is this the pullback spot for the NASDAQ? We're seeing a big red candlestick forming here, um, you know, towards the end of the day. Who knows, guys? My, in my personal opinion, again, the markets are in need of a cool-off period. Four straight days of about 4 5 6% um, gain throughout the entire uh, three indexes that we track. That's really, really strong. And, and a pullback, I think, is healthy um, after this. So, you know, technically speaking now, S&P and the Dow, they're kind of breaking out of their downtrends. The S&P is, the Dow, it's almost there, it pretty much is as well, but the NASDAQ actually is still downtrending, believe it or not, based on these technicals, right? At this point in time, you know, we're still trending below the moving average resistance here. We're at a higher or rather a lower high from the previous. And until we break, you know, into let's say the mid 7,000s, maybe 7,600, you know, we're still going to be downtrending until we do, until we break into those levels, if we break into those levels, right? So going here to the 20 day, um, one hour chart, you guys notice, you know, we are breaking out of moving average resistances here, but we're also approaching a level of resistance that's at about 74.50, where it seems like we ended up getting capped off at today. And a little bit under, I guess you could say $7,500 is also a resistance for um, the NASDAQ right here. So for next week, just keep an eye for a potential cool off here. Again, the market's they're in need of a cool off. So keep an eye, you know, we could be heading down here um, next week in terms of the NASDAQ here. So that's kind of the overall market update um, for today. This week was a much needed green week, in my opinion. The markets have been getting clobbered. You guys know this if you've been paying attention over the last month. Really, the whole month of May was red for the entire stock market. So this was a much needed um, green week. So let's talk talk about what I ended up trading today. And today was another quick trading day for me. If you guys watched yesterday's video, I actually took a loss on SQQQ and I actually gained some of that back today and some profit on top of it with the inverse to SQQQ, which is TQQQ. And TQQQ is an inverse ETF. It's a 3x leveraged ETF that goes up in price whenever the NASDAQ is going up in price, the NASDAQ 100. Notice how, you know, it went up nearly 6% today and the NASDAQ was up about 1.9%. So if you do 1.9% times three, 
you'll see that's going to equal around uh, what TQQQ went up today, which is around 5.7%. And it's probably not the exact number, but it's in the ballpark of a 3x move in comparison to the NASDAQ, right? So this morning, I noticed how the markets were. Um, of course, I watch pre-market every single day. I keep an eye on the market futures, right? That's what I do every single day throughout the week so I can get an understanding, okay, where's the market going to potentially open today? What could be the direction? What trend? What way are we heading? Is it going to be a red day? Green Day based on the market uh, pre-market action heading into the market open. And today, what do we see, guys? The markets were up pretty decently in terms of pre-market. If you guys can see here, you know, 7.45 a.m. at about 8.45 a.m. Eastern Standard, about 8.30, we started to heavily spike in the NASDAQ. And notice how literally at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, look at what the NQ did here. It went from $7,300 all the way up to about $7,360 in the matter of 20 minutes. And I was watching this live and I was saying to myself, okay, this is definitely going to be a strong green morning just due to how quick the NASDAQ was moving, right? It's like a launch pad here. It shot up in the matter of like, how long was that? An hour and a half? It shot up 150 Points. And if you guys see 150 points, that was about a 2% move nearly. And, and in that span, TQQQ went up 6% roughly, right? And my goal here was to get into TQQQ and grab at least 1% profit. So we got into TQQQ. I got into TQQQ. Not perfectly. I didn't time it perfectly, right? I'm not some kind of wizard. I don't know exactly when to get in, but I did end up getting in right in the middle of this pump up right here. I noticed how, again, it was moving very quickly. We consolidated a bit for a couple of minutes here, and then we started to climb. And once we started to climb, I noticed the NASDAQ moving pretty aggressively. We pulled back on TQQQ here, and this is when I started to build my position at about 9.45 a.m. And from there, I kind of just held it until we consolidated to the next level, which was at around 10.20 to, actually, no, it was a bit earlier than that. It was about 10 o'clock to 10.10 a.m. So let's say, I think I got in, I was on this first pullback here at about $54, and I believe 82 cents we started to consolidate again and from there we started to pump up and then once we started to consolidate again this is when I ended up selling off and you guys can see it was right around a 1% move I sold off on this little pullback here at about $55 and I guess you can say roughly I think it was like 55 uh, 32 or something like that so it wasn't the craziest of trades but it was a 1% profit and for those of you guys that don't know, I guess newer viewers, they don't know. I'm personally going for a more conservative approach when it comes to trading. I'm not looking to trade these penny stocks. I'm not looking to grab 20% per day on some of these, you know, small cap stocks that move like crazy. I like keeping it consistent, 1% to 2% profit, 3% profit on really good days, 5% on ridiculous days um, in terms of my day trades, and that's what I've learned works for me. And the whole thing in terms of trading is you have to find out what works for you. That's going to lead to your success in the long term. Keeping the losses small, 1% to 2%, and maximizing your gains. That's the whole entire idea. So that's what I ended up doing today on the 7th of June in terms of my trading. I would love to know what you guys ended up doing down below in that comment section. And give me a quick second, guys. My laptop is about to die. I'm literally going to plug this in my outlet. I'll see you in a second. Hold up. Ah, there we go, guys. I always forget sometimes to plug in my laptop. We were at 7%, and if it died on me, that would not be good because I would most likely have to re-record this entire video. But let's talk about a couple of stocks today. I did mention 
uh, V and Microsoft. Let's take a look at those and let's just take a look at a bunch of stocks in general to see how everything performed some major stocks out there. So MSFT today up $3.58, 2.8%. Take a look at this move on Microsoft just this week, guys. We went from a dollar or $120. I wish it was a dollar. Oh my God, I would buy my whole portfolio in Microsoft if it was a dollar. It was $120 per share in the beginning of this year. We ended up going all the way up to 132. So that was roughly a $12, $13 move in the span of a couple of days that has to be some type of record or something for Microsoft guys I, I don't know if it's gone up this much in the matter of four days before but hey it did it it went up let's see on a percentage basis how much that was nearly 10% in four days for Microsoft so all-time high yet again let's make sure it was an all-time high yes it was an all-time high in Microsoft if we're going to V they might have hit an all-time high again yep they hit an all-time high today at about hundred and seventy one dollars per share going over here you guys can see this week on Visa was ridiculous we went from 156 all the way up to about $171, which was a little bit less of a move than Microsoft, but still very solid move of about 7.4%. Apple today did very well. At one point, it was up like $6 per share. This one did very spectacular as well this week, from 170 roughly all the way up to 191 We were up about 10% this week, and this kind of gives you an understanding of why the NASDAQ did the best out of the three major indexes this week. It's because tech recovered like crazy, guys. The big names, Apple, Microsoft, they just recovered very, very nicely. So going over to Facebook, Facebook <coughs> actually did very well too. From 160 all the way up to 173 per share, that was a 7% move this week. Very, very good. And again, a tech stock went up very much to this week, hence why the NASDAQ did very well too. Amazon was up $50 today per share. It was back in the 1800s now, and it started off the week in the 1680s, up 7% this whole week. Pretty, pretty crazy here, guys. Netflix is back up to 360. It started off the week at 332. That's about an 8%, 9% move to the upside uh, there. Going over some other ones, we saw KO actually hit an all-time high today as well at about $52.19. If I'm not mistaken, that is an all-time high. I'm pretty positive it is. Yup, it hit an all-time high right there. What other ones? Uh, MMM, guys. This is one that I'm actually watching right now. It's been doing very nicely on a technical basis, uh, reversing out of that 50 SMA resistance. And we're also noticing on a longer-term chart, if we go back to that three-year one week actually let's go to the 20-year chart very quickly we can see you know we're actually holding a support level right here that was a resistance back a couple of years ago in 2015 roughly at about 160 dollars we're also noticing a green candlestick forming right here and it seems like if we break out of 170 on the longer term chart which is a resistance that we're seeing right now from back in 2015 as well that's what we're going to need to see you know for a reversal on 3m right now and 3m is a company that i've actually been buying recently for a dividend portfolio from my long-term dividend portfolio and it's pretty interesting right now for a swing trade but I'd still be careful with it because 3M has a lot of exposure to China. China, obviously, we're in a trade war with them. So if things escalate, right, if things continue to escalate, this stock could very well start dropping again. That's just a warning for you all out there. So those are just a couple um, of stocks, how they did today, some that I'm personally watching. You know, heading into this next week, again, just like always, I'm going to be focusing on market ETFs, and I want to see if this rally continues. If it does continue, who knows, guys? I might hop into some large caps, but again, the move in the market right now is quite irrational in my opinion, so I'm probably not going to be hopping into any uh, large caps quite yet because I don't want to be caught in a trap that's like the worst nightmare for a trader right if they get caught if they think the market's reversing right now on no 
uh, fundamental basis, really, and they start buying up stocks at these levels and the market swings to the downside, what are you going to be? Well, you're going to be trapped in those stocks where you're going to have to take a sizable loss there if you don't cut your losses quick enough. So that's it, that's it for this video, guys. That's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me again and it supports the channel in general. Drop a comment. Let me know how you guys did this week. Let me know any stocks that you guys want me to talk about on Sunday's video. And for all you that don't know, every single Sunday I make a video planning out my week talking about stocks and I talk about stocks that you guys actually comment on this video the one you're watching right now the Friday video or ones that they comment on the discord group chat in the call out section so feel free go down below drop some stocks I'll take a look at them if I see potential in them I'll talk about them in the Sunday video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video I appreciate every single one of you guys out there supporting, subscribing, liking. The community we're building here is amazing, and I'm grateful for it every single day. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great weekend. Peace out.